Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today I'm gonna to respond to a very, very common question that I get all the time. And that is, what is Sculptra and what are my thoughts on Sculptra? And I think it's a good question. I think it's a fair question. I think it's something that you guys should know about so you can make some really good and informed decisions in terms of application and know basically you know, what the limitations are as well as the benefits of it. All right, so let's break it down. Let's kind of talk about aging very briefly. So you've got three things happening. You've got skin changes, you've got volume loss, then you've got sagging, all right? And as you know, I like to keep these three things very, very defined and separate. So skin changes require daily active skincare routines, sun protection, microneedling, IPL, you know, those type of things, right? Those are lasers and stuff. That's all the stuff that improves your skin. That's the other side of the aging, you know, continuum. There's stuff that affects the shape and there's stuff that affects the skin. Skin is very, very important. It's just its own thing. And that's where the Karam MD trifecta and all that other stuff that I developed comes into play is to address that. Then you've got the stuff that affects shape. What happens to the face that makes the face look aged? The face starts to get longer, neck starts to sag, jowls start to sag. Then the face also deflates. What's happening there is fat loss causing the deflation and the elongation of fascia causing the face to sag. All of this stuff is really hitting ahead, really starting to happen, literally in our late 40s and early 50s, and when you start to see manifestations of true physical aging happen, that's when people start to say, wait a minute, I don't look like myself anymore, everything is starting to kind of like slip away, and uh, what can I do about it? This is to help guide you in terms of understanding where Sculptra fits into this continuum. So Sculptra came out at least over 20 plus years ago. In fact, it was one of the very early volume options that were available through an injectable form. And I remember this very clearly because I was in my fellowship and residency days um, at the hospital at UC Irvine, and it got FDA approved for treating facial volume loss, fat loss, lipodystrophy as it's called, secondary to the HIV cocktail, the medicines that people were on for, for treatment of HIV that cause fat atrophy. And fat atrophy then, you know, had a what kind of solution. Sculpture was the answer. So it was interesting because it came out to treat the fat loss relative to these side effects of these medicines. And as a result of that, we saw faces that were really gaunt and hollow starting to become a little bit fuller. And so, of course, you know, you like everything else, I mean, Botox had a medical um, application originally. And you start thinking, okay, what can we, that looks really interesting. How can we apply it to cosmetic surgery or cosmetic procedures and anti-aging, et cetera. And at the same time, our awareness of what was happening to the uh, aging process was starting to shift in the, you know, the 90s, early 2000s, you know, 80s, whatever. It was much more skewed towards surgical, right? It's like facelift, eyelid, you know, brow lift. These were the things you did for somebody who's aging and wanted to address it. There was no thought about treatment of volume at that point. But then our knowledge started to shift a little bit and became more aware. And in fact, that was right around the time, around 2004, when I became aware of, of fat loss and, and the importance of volume augmentation in the, in the spectrum. But I was literally one of the early, early people that, you know, started, that started to make sense. So all this is very vivid in my mind. But what was happening was when Sculpture had its, had its HIV thing, people started using it off label because the trend was shifting towards, hey, maybe aging isn't just sagging, maybe aging is deflation. Maybe aging is all deflation. In fact, it's a, it's a phenomenon of going from a grape to a raisin. It's just a deflated grape, basically. That's what aging is. Kind of like intuitively makes sense. If you look at an aging face, you know, if it deflates and it, it drops, it makes kind of sense, you're like, okay. So there was this whole movement towards doing this. And Sculptra was one of the early you know, parts of that story because people started using it exclusively to try to reinflate the face. Now, let's back up for a second. What is Sculptra? Okay, this is really important. So Sculptra is not a filler in the same way the Juvederm or Resilin is. 
Juvederm Wrestling or Hyaluronic Acid Gels, okay? Fat transfer is what I use a lot during surgery, <clears throat> is actual volume. Take fat from one part of the body, inject it into another part of the body. We're just shifting volume from one place to the other. With products like Juvederm and Wrestling, you're taking volume in a syringe and injecting it into the face to do it that way. Sculpture is completely different. Sculpture has no volume when you add it. In fact, the way to think about it is, sculpture is just fertilizer, okay? So think about it for a second like this. Sculpture is fertilizer for your fibroblasts, which are the cells that create collagen. It stimulates collagen production. Very different than the fat and, and hyaluronic acid fillers. So with Sculptra, you need several treatments. And the reason is because the first treatment just starts to stimulate the fibroblasts to make collagen. The second and third and fourth start to increase the stimulation and momentum towards collagen production. That collagen production is what adds volume. It literally is layers of collagen being built. In fact, what is the, you know, the actual ingredient is poly -L lactic acid. And poly -L lactic acid is the material that is actually in dissolvable sutures that are used in surgery. And what people had found was when they use them as part of surgery that when they go back in, there's little threads of collagen or scar being formed in that area. And as a result of that, led people to realize that if you just simply powderize the suture and use it to inject, you're gonna get the same kind of effect, this collagen stimulatory effect. So what's very important about this is, unlike hyaluronic acid fillers, which literally dissipate with, with time, like from the moment they're injected, they're, your body's trying to get rid of it. Sculpture being collagen, your body's not trying to break it down immediately. In fact, collagen is normal to be in the body, so it sticks around a lot longer. You get a lot more durability out of it. So that's a pro. Two to four years of, uh, of endurance with, with Sculptra. Here are the caveats. Number one, what we've learned since then is that the entire story isn't just you know, deflation, reinflation, and you're back to normal. So what ended up happening is a lot of people were pumping lots and lots and lots of sculpture in the faces and blowing them up and things look really crazy. And as I just mentioned, it lasts two to four years or longer. And all of a sudden now people are like floating around with all this like big face syndrome, right? Not a good thing. The other aspect of it is because it is collagen stimula stimulatory, when you inject it near the surface of the skin, those collagen, you know, beads, start to show. So areas like under the eyes, you start to see little beading. If you ever injected, God forbid, in the lips, get beading. There's very specific areas that can be injected safely. Like for example, I'm totally down and cool with injecting into the temples because it's a deep injection. You, It's hard to get a good base into the uh, temple, but the product like Sculpture works beautifully there. Relatively safe, complication-free, injected near the bone inject it in there and build it up. Two to four treatments and a hollow temple can be significantly improved. So I like it for that area. Obviously I don't like it around the eyes. Fillers work better there. All of the things I'm saying, I personally like fat more than all these, but I'm giving you the pros and cons. This part of the cheek, you know, generally speaking, you really don't need it there because at the end of the day, this hollow that you get in this part is usually not because of volume loss per se, it's because the cheek has come down. So simply lift, lifting the cheek back up into position, you're like, okay, I don't really need any volume there, it just was displaced volume. Same goes for the mid face. The mid face drifts down, leaving this little groove here. You put some sculpture in there to fill it in and the next thing you know, you get a lift and it brings up, now you're overly filled in that region. So you gotta be very particular about where the, the sculpture goes, but again, like any other kind of a filler, you gotta use it tastefully, you gotta use it in, uh, in harmony and balance, and you gotta define what is related to laxity and what is related to volume loss. The general rules of thumb is temples hollow, this area above the brow hollows, underneath the eyes hollow, this area right here in the, in the jawline hollows, the lip loses volume, the cheeks do not really lose volume even though they look like they have. This part of the face, maybe a little bit, but not really. And uh, in this idea of putting it in this region to kind of fill it up, it has its pros and cons. It can give you the illusion of being kind of lifted up into place, but that's also not an area that you really lose volume. It's just things slide down. And that is probably where we are today. We're starting to see, and including myself, who's very like volume aware for the last 20 years, is it's a balance between lifting and volume. And it's like a little bit of each does the trick, not a lot of either. So keep that in mind. But in general, Sculptra, you know, it's a, it's a safe procedure to do. Just don't do it in those 
areas around the eyes and around you know areas that are close to the surface of the skin make sure you're using a very very experienced and aesthetically aware injector because at the end of the day if something's gonna last two to four years if you don't like it you're stuck and unlike hyaluronic acid where you can literally put an enzyme in and get rid of it there's no getting rid of sculpture it's there right it's there I mean I go into faces that have had sculpture in five six years ago and the scar tissue formed by this by this collagen production is so dense and heavy and it actually makes operations more difficult but you know, at the end of the day, I'm just pointing out that it's not going away. It's not disappearing. It doesn't evaporate. Fillers do go away to some degree, and then you've got some of it that sticks around forever. Sculpture, for the most part, sticks around for good. So be very aware of who gets to inject it for you. And uh, stick by these guidelines about where to inject it and, and not to expect it to lift your face. And that's probably the most important thing. If you have laxity, laxity needs to be lifted volume needs to be refilled they're not exactly the same thing so please don't fall into this kind of old school approach of of filling 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 to kind of lift the face and avoid surgery when the time comes tissues are lax and you find yourself doing this all the time you know it's time for surgery and the the volume can augment and improve the surgical outcome but it cannot replace it all right folks i hope that helped offer a good understanding and explanation of both the science and clinical history and implications and indications of when in you can use it and shouldn't use it and uh and ultimately you know your empowerment and your ability to make good decisions for yourself is what these videos are all about uh and uh and i love your your support and and sending it along to friends and family and help getting the uh, the word out to uh, the people you care about so they can make great decisions as well so if you haven't already my friends um hit subscribe get this uh once a week into your uh, your inbox hit the indication um, signal as well as uh, if you enjoyed the video please like it and uh, if you have any questions about anything drop them in the comments below i am always here to do my best to answer as many of them as I can. I, like I said, education and empowerment is very important to me and keeping you guys safe and on track to making good decisions for yourself. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Dr. Amir Karam, until next time.